What's going on YouTube? Today we're doing to have a look at intro to the blue team or intro to blue team path from Hack the Box. So basically Hack the, Hack the Box has some tracks. You can take a look here. Um, with every track contains specific challenges and machines where you can practice the said skill. So what I decided to do guys Let's go over these tracks beside the machines. So why not we do these tracks, right? So let's start with the Enter the Blue Team. And from here, the first challenge is Chase. So in Chase, we go over a pickup file. We analyze how a web server has been compromised. So you can read the description here. The bottom line is a web server has been compromised and we're given a pickup file. We have to analyze the pickup file with Wireshark and deduce what has happened so what do we do we download the file okay and we head over to the virtual machine open the file with wireshark and start analyzing the traffic so since here we are analyzing a compromised web server and we're given a subset of the overall traffic that took place uh, while the web server was compromised what we need to do here, we need to take a look at the HTTP traffic. We're only interested here in uncovering what has happened before the web server was compromised. So there must be definitely some HTTP traffic, malicious HTTP traffic we can uncover before the web server was compromised, right? So let's head over to Wireshark and now filter with HTTP traffic. So hey HTTP. And now we reveal the HTTP traffic. So the first thing we need to do guys here is to find out what is the source IP and the destination IP. Meaning we want to find out what is the IP address of the attacker and what is that one of the web server. We can find out by looking at the info here. We want to see who is making the first GET request. So if you take a look at this GET slash HTTP as you can see, the first GET request stemmed from the IP that ends with 7 and the recipient was the IP that ends with 5. This means that the IP that ends with 5 is the web server and the IP that ends with 7 is the attacker. Okay, so now we set the IP address of the attacker. Now we know the attacker IP address and we know the web server address. Next, we want to see and take a look at the pattern of the requests that have been sent from the attacker to the web server. The first request is a normal request, right? Getting the main page. And as you can see, the web server has responded with not modified. And then the attacker requested to access the, the uh, image, welcome. And then as you can see, the attacker requested to access the upload page, upload.aspx. And after that, the attacker, they tried to upload a file, as you can see from the path, post, request, and then we have the upload page and the parameter happens to be named operation and the operation equals to upload. So, as you can see, we started to uncover some of what has happened. So let's go back to the first square and right click follow the DCP stream. We want to follow the, the full stream of these packets. So we right click and we select DCP stream. Okay, so we have a series of requests and responses. Here's the request from the attacker and here's the request from uh, the response from the web server highlighted with blue. So we see the first request to the main page and then the request to, the ac to, to access the image and here things start to get interesting so accessing the upload page and the web server had no problem with that it returned the upload page fine scrolling down scrolling down here we see some of what has happened as we can see the web server response on that seems to we it, it, there has some to be some form where you can upload the file as you can see this is the operation the parameter right and here we see the request type and here we see also the authentication key please specify a file please specify a file so when the attacker requested to access the upload page here 
the server responded with a page displaying um, the statement please specify a file of course along with an input that takes the attacker's file and upload it the parameter is operation okay let's see next what happened next the attacker seemed to have provided the file name as you can see now the attacker accessed the upload and provided the operation which is upload if you scroll down we can see the file name that has been uploaded here it is file name equals cmd and here we see also the authentication key is admin so the attacker seemed to have access to the web server somehow as an admin judging by the authentication key here so the, it is admin so what happened here guys is the attacker has got access to the dashboard of the web server they might have signed in somehow but we were not able to see how the they did that so the packet capture the packet capture we are analyzing here must have been taken after the attacker has logged in we still don't know how the attacker yet logged into the web server if we get back to the description of the challenge we see here one of the web servers triggered an AV alert but none of the sysadmins say they were logged into it we have taken a, a capture before shutting the server down to take a clone of the disk can you take a look at the pcap and see if anything is up so from the description we can conclude that someone has logged in to the web server and then after they logged in they uploaded some files which triggered the AV alert the administrators were alert and actually they're telling you that none of us none of us has logged into the web server so why the AV has triggered an alert there must be someone who has logged in and caused the AV to trigger an alert and this is it they uploaded a web shell but we still don't know how they logged in anyway scrolling down scrolling down we see the observer response as you can see the observer accepted the file and said file uploaded fine the next thing the attacker did is visiting the cmd and issuing commands let's take a look at what are the commands the attacker has issued so we can see them in the response of the web server scrolling all the way down let's see here okay here is still yet nothing and then we see post the post request to access the cmd and issuing the commands now here we see the command guys under the path the path and then you have the cmd equal to cert utility dash url cache dash split and then the attacker seems trying to retrieve a file from their server which ends with dot seven if you remember and what the file they're trying to download it is the netcat and they are saving the netcat to user public netcat and then they run it let's see what the web server responded with if you scroll down the server said search util url cache command completed successfully so the attacker has retrieved the netcat from their server and download it to the victim machine okay now we want to find out if the attacker managed to successfully run the netcat on the web server we scroll down see we another request from the attacker slash cmd and let's take a look at the command they try to run so scrolling down all the way till you find the cmd so they navigated to the save path or the location of where they stored the netcat c users public nc and they issued nc the ip is the one that ends with dot seven which happens to be the attacker's ip so they are trying to connect to the attacker's ip to their own ip 
on the port 444 and dash e cmd and button equal run so the attacker has uploaded the web shell and through the web shell they were able to retrieve netcat and run it on the virtual machine so now we want to find out what has happened post compromise so how do we do that we now know what the port the attacker is using to send and receive commands so we close this and we go back to the wireshark filter so now we know how the hack has happened the attacker has logged into the web server somehow maybe through a web for maybe through a web vulnerability or through brute force and then they managed to upload a web shell named cmd okay after uploading the web shell they were able to retrieve netcat from their machine and issue it on the victim machine to connect back to their uh, machine so now we want to know what happened post compromise so we type tcp dot port equal 4444 these are all of the packets that will exchange between the attacker and the uh, web server or the machine that hosts the web server note that as you can see here the first packet on this port is actually stemming or coming from the web server machine dot five right and the reason for that is the first it is a reverse shell so the, the, the reverse shell the first connection comes from the target machine not your machine the first connection comes from the target machine connecting back to your machine and then you start issuing commands now starting from here let's right click and follow all the stream to see what has happened post compromise okay so here the attacker has connected to the virtual the uh, target machine it is microsoft windows and we see here the first command they issued is who am i as you can see they landed on the machine as the web server user then they issued ip config to learn the network configuration which is important in any engagement or any hack you want to know what are the ip addresses on all the interfaces connected to the machine and if you scroll down we see the attacker has cd to the home the the main directory c and they issued powershell command so what does this powershell command do dash ap bypass bypass execution policy dash c invoke web request and here they're trying to download a file as you can see from their machine that ends with 0.7 and this is the file name the file name seems to be page 64 no page 60 base 32 judging by the uppercase characters and the numbers between 2 and 6 and then they saved the output file under users public and the file name is file.txt but they got an error the term invoke web request isn't recognized that's the response from the machine and then they did it another way with cert utility again trying to download the file from their machine and storing the file under users public and this time system cannot find the path specified again it failed so what do we want to achieve out of this if you go back submit the flag so basically there is a flag we want to find to complete the challenge so for to me the flag seems to be under this so somehow i want to need we're going to need to decode this one so it is base 60 uh, 32 so we copy that and we go to cyberchef so the recipe will be base 32 32 okay this is the input and we immediately get the output which is the flag we copy that go back submit and you know i did this before so this is the flag you submitted and you complete the challenge so that's it for the first challenge chase i hope you guys like that and please tell me in, your, in the comments if you want me to continue doing these challenges thank you for watching